Hello everyone and welcome back to the HCW YouTube channel and welcome back to the Indie um, Preview Show and it's a new Indie we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing Prid yeah, Bridge Pro Wrestling, that's a good start and it's going to be at Stour Bridge at the Legion I believe it's called, um, let me get the, I didn't type that word down, the Am Amblicotta British Legion, um, obviously all the directions and the postcode etc on the um, description. But we are joined by, I would say, one of the stars of Bridge Pro Wrestling, Sam Hughes. How are you doing? Bonjour. Yeah, I feel better now you talk, call me one of the stars. Thank you very much. If I need to go rub there, I'll take that. Yeah, well, you are the star in my heart. Um, except there is a bit of bias, which we'll discuss, because one of the star, one of my stars is obviously on the show as well, and there's no bias on this channel. Um, no. So we are here to break down uh, the debut show, the preview. Um this won't be an in-depth kind of preview because obviously it's the first show. People haven't faced each other, so we're pretty much just making it up as we go along. But I've got a bit of information from prior matches they've had and so forth. Um, obviously, Chantal and Brandon are the main events, so we will discuss them last. We will discuss your match second from last, and we'll just break. I don't know what order the other ones are going to be in, so I'm just going to wing it as well. Um, so we will kick off with a match which I am looking forward to because I don't think I've seen him live yet. Um, so we've got Hassan Ali, of course I've seen him live, um, versus Levi Murr. Um, so a bit of background for the both. Hassan Ali um, was a kamikaze regular, um, the founder of Influence. And Levi Muir a, has been around for a bit now and he was in NXT UK, which is a massive thing in itself. Um uh, they've only been in the ring once together, um, according to Cage Match, which was at NBW versus Kamikaze, um, which is a losing affair. Um, they teamed together. Um, so, do you know much? Of, well, obviously, you know about Hassan. You kicked him in the dick. Um, but do you know much about Levi yourself? Uh, I've not kicked Levi in the dick, uh, unfortunately. But no, um, <laughs> this will be, like you said, is a match that will be interesting because they're two big guys yeah. and they're going to be... It's just going to be a battle of power, you know. It has has potential to be, a, a, you know, a spectacle. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting because these two have never faced one on one, and obviously Levi has got the massive, you know, advantage in terms of the experience where he's yeah. been in the WWE NXT UK. But at the same time, Hassan's got a lot of momentum behind him. You know, he's he's released his own clothing brand now with Influence. Yeah. You know, he's got a lot of people, you know, repping that. So I think Hassan, being the charismatic guy that he is, he's going to have the crowd naturally behind him. At the same time, Levi is probably going to be his biggest challenge. Well, one of his biggest challenges up to date. Yeah, it's probably going to be one of the biggest matches that he's had. Like his face, um, probably the only other one I can think was um, a big match for him is in the essence of Kamikaze was K. Jutler. Um, but yeah, this is a moment for Hassan because he was very um, stop start in Kamikaze um, with his um, his matches. He wouldn't really get on winning streaks. Um, so this will be if he can start off straight away in Bridge Pro by picking up a win against someone like Levi Murr, That will be um, very very impressive. Yeah, I think if Hassan intends on you know pursuing bigger things in Bridge Pro, wants a title shot in the future. Then what better way than to establish yourself as a contender than to knock off a former NXT guy? You know, this is a massive opportunity. But equally, Levi is coming to a new promotion. He's going to want to prove to everybody that he's been in the WWE for a reason. And he's not going to want to mess around. He's going to want to send the message himself. Yeah, exactly. When you come into a new promotion, well, everyone technically is coming to this new promotion. You want to kind of be the, the star of it and... Picking up a win straight away um, with the background he's got would be perfect for that. Um, I'll be honest, if I had to pick a winner from paper, I'd go with Levi, but it's not going to be an easy match for him because Hassan, as you said, you faced him. Um, he is a powerhouse. Um, you put him down by um, certain means, which we won't go fully into, um, which kicked him in the dick. Um, but yeah, I'd go Levi. Do you, um, do you have anything different for that? or? I think... I, I think it's going to be a very close one, a, a closer one to call than we probably think. Yeah, I think Hassan could pull the upset here. Yeah, I genuinely think that Hassan's going to be—he's going to be hungry. He's going to want to prove something here, and he's going to want to make a statement. And I think Levi might not be able to prepare for that. So I think Hassan will genuinely take him unawares, and you know, hit him with that spear potentially one, two, three. Yeah, and the trouble of being experienced is um, there's more footage to watch. 
Um, so Hassan's more likely if he's done his homework, he's going to have a lot of footage to see, whereas Levi's not going to see as much as Hassan. So he might have a tactical game plan, and we will see on the 29th this Sunday. Um, we will move into a match which sounds very fun. Um, we've got Natalie Sykes um, versus um, Shorty. Um, so a lot of the information I'm going via is on Cage Match, and I can see via Twitter, so if some of it's wrong, don't sue me. Um, so... Sykes is coming off a lot of big matches, um, like as she fought Ava Everett for WXCW, WXCW, WXW, and she also fought Ali Catch originally, so they're two big matches, um, so she's on a bit of a heart streak at the moment, um, and from my point, from what I can find, this is Shorty's first match outside of um, CPW, um, that I can see, she may have wrestled somewhere else, but I can't find it. Do you know much about that? Uh... I'm, I'm, I think you're correct. I think, I, unless we're both wrong, this could be Shorty's first match outside of CPW. But I, I'm aware that Shorty has been making a name for herself in other industries. She's released music. She's currently, you know, I believe she's a tattoo apprentice now. And she's she's got a lot of things going for her. You know, so confidence is going to be high. So I think well, it doesn't matter the company she's in. You know, she's going to be in a positive mindset, which is obviously going to play a big part in her match. And I think, you know, Natalie's going to have to look out for that. Yeah, especially, um, as I said, that everyone has to break out of a company at some point. Um, every wrestler um, has always started somewhere, and this is the time to break out. Um, this is the first time match that I could see from both girls. Um, so this is probably a big match for both of them to establish themselves, like we said, with Hassan and Levi, to be the top female contender in that um, in the company. Because um, you've got big boots uh, when you've got Chantal Jordan um, appearing on the show as well. Um, so either one of them needs to kind of, this will be a big momentum match for either one of them. Um, I'll be honest, I've not seen Shorty wrestle that much. Um, and by that much, I've not seen her wrestle at all. Um, but Natalie Sykes, I've seen a couple of times and from what I've seen, she's very good in the ring. Um, so I can't really give an opinion based upon that, who I would think would win. Cause I've only seen Natalie fold. So if I had to go with, it would just be her due to that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think Natalie is going to pull off a win here purely because, like we said, there's more. Natalie's got more experience in other promotions around the country. You know, she out of the two, you know, she's got way more experience. And I think Shorty's going to have it's going to be a big challenge from both because, like I said, with Hassan, Shorty's going to have a lot. To, she's going to want to prove something, you know. And like I said earlier, she's got a lot of momentum in her life going on right now. And, you know, she's in a good place and she's going to you know, use that to her advantage. So I think this isn't going to be an easy match whatsoever. But I think in terms of just edging it, I think I'm going to have to give it to Natalie. Yeah, from paper, like I said, I can only go via that. I'd probably go Natalie just from the, the experience she's had fighting people at Ali Catch, Ava Everett, and being around the country in uh, places like Rollies and so forth. Um, she's got a bit more experience. So I will go with that, um, Natalie just upon that. Um, we move on to a triple threat. Um, so we've got Steve Valentino, um, Joey Scott, um, a couple of veterans there, and we've got a man that I'm not biased about at all. Um, the 21st century hero, um, Luke Douglas. So, tell of the tape, um, Douglas and Valentino used to be a tag team at NWB, um, NBW, um, so they've tagged before but I've never seen I don't think they've had an actual match that I could find um Valentino and Scott have faced off quite a few times um and Joey Scott from what I can see is three and zero um so he's picked up the win in every match they've had in a singles match um this is a very much like a, it's a very much an experienced kind of like bunch of wrestlers being put together and the, the styles of each one is completely different um it's going to be one of the matches that you definitely need to see live yeah i agree 100 percent. like it's the problem with that is made it so hard to call yeah you know, not for me you can really <laughs> see any individuals you know picking up the win here because we're all so talented in our own right we've got the experience under the belt and for good reason, you know, they are, when they're in that ring, you can't help but admire them. You know, you've got Steve Valentino, who's extremely charismatic. Mm-hmm. You've got Joey Scott, who's willing to, you know, put his body on the line in any match, he's, you know, he's in. And you've got Luke Douglas, who's willing to do the same, but more hardcore manner. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's like, 
I think there's definitely a reason why these three have been put together. Uh, because it's like, it's the equivalent to like when an unstoppable force meets an, an immovable object. It's like, you get, yeah, you get these three really highly respected individuals, but what's going to happen when you put them all against each other? Who are you going to root for? Who's going to, you know, for, who's going to come in clutch? Yeah, um, and it's it's a, like every match on this card. It's about getting momentum, um, breaking into this company and being like one of the top guys in it. Um, as I said, Valentino's got that um, on his shoulder that Joey Scott's beat him a few times, but that didn't involve Luke Douglas being in the match at the same time, so um, he doesn't need to rely on that as much. Um, Luke is branching out quite a lot now, um, so he wants to make a mark. He obviously lost at Kamikaze previously, um, which we've got a review which will come out after this video. So he might want to. He might be a bit pissed off. Which will Luke, when he's pissed off, um, watch out. And I'm, it's a triple threat, so it would be no disqualification. I'm assuming. Um, I just expect chaos, um, especially. With Luke involved, Steve Valentino, Joey Scott can out wrestle anyone on his day. Um, I was speaking to Alex Connors, um, and he said he had a very tough match against him at GDCW re um, just last week. Because I'm not biased, I'm going to go with Luke Douglas to pick up a win. Just because I'm not biased, and I wouldn't say that normally. Um, do you see any difference? I can and I can't. It, 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 like I said, it is genuinely so hard to call. I couldn't tell you, but I can see Steve Valentino picking up the win here. I think I've been on a few shows with Steve, and whenever he's in like a new environment, he thrives in it. He thrives on you know making a statement, making you know getting the crowd behind him because he's he's so charismatic when he wants to be. And he can get anybody to support him. And I think that could be the key difference in this match. You know, the crowd support. You know, assuming he wants the crowd support, if he does, he will do whatever he needs to do to get it. And he will do one hell of a job to get it. But once he's got it, he's got all the momentum in the world. And I think he's hard to stop. Yeah, um, I'll be honest. I've not had the chance to see um, Steve Valentino um, live. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I believe I've seen Joey Scott previously. And obviously, Luke, I've seen a lot um but it's gonna be a banging match um and it's it's one of the matches which you could, uh, that alone probably could bring people in um uh, just seeing them three going against each other and it's gonna be fun link and you miss it link and you will miss it i love that kind of saying um we will move on to a tag team match um which we've got um tj sky who wasn't originally in this match um, um and it was supposed to be eddie woods um and Adam Idol um, versus Joe Wade and Jet Marshall. Um, so, Tyler tape for that. Um, Joe Wade and Jet Marshall are, are fight regularly for North and Rise. Um, Adam Idol is a PWL regular, so um, they're calling upon a lot of experience from different Midlands companies and up north. So, it's nice to see that it's not just full on Midlands, you've got everyone out here. And TJ Sky, um, Tyler the Tape for him. I don't know, even know if I'm allowed to say his name um, because he's called us out on Twitter saying that he doesn't want us to talk about him on the BCCW show, so I don't know if it's the same for this. So from now on, until he allows me to, um, he will be now known as Redacted. Um, so Redacted hates HCW. Um, he's very known um, for his time in APW, BCCW, which I don't think um, Redacted wants us to know, and Wrestling Hinkley. This is going to be a good match in the essence. It's very much um, experience of Adam Idol and TJ Sky, the crafty experience versus um, like the youth and the talent of um, Joe Wade, Jet Marshall. Um, from what I've seen, they're very fun to watch. And then Redacted is very fun to watch as well. Um, when you get to see him in the ring, um, he does a perfect drop kick wanted me to mention that and then adam idol character wise is brilliant i'll be honest i love adam idol when i see him pwl um have you had a chance to see him match um, or be in the ring with many of these people uh i've been around redacted um on multiple occasions now yeah you uh, might be able to mention him it's just me <laughs> i play it safe i play it safe uh, and again it pretty much goes back to what you were saying this is definitely a case of you know youth versus experience you know redacted and adam have got that experience you know they've been around the country you know 
performing on shows on a fairly regular basis. You know, they've got experience under the belt, and I think they're definitely going to try and use this against them. Because this is, again, going to be a case of, like, don't get me wrong, when I say experience, I do not mean slow. Like, Redacted is capable of moving. Yeah. Like, I multiple times in APW and you know I've seen him online I've been around him and he's just and he's an energetic guy you know in and out the ring so he's definitely going to use that to his advantage and I think it's definitely not going to be a case of like you know speed versus slow it's going to be they're going to collide the styles will collide in a good way and they will mash yeah, um, and Redacted himself, um, I think the reason um, he's not enjoying this is because he's not having a good time in BCCW, but everywhere else he's been on um, kind of roll. Um, but because this podcast is only really focused on BCCW where he's been at, it's not good for him. Um, but I will, I honestly can't look past him and Adam Idol as a tag team um Obviously, the other two, um, I, I, from what I could see, they aren't a tag team. I think they've been put together for Bridge Pro, so it might be the same where they, this could be their start, and this could be the start for um, Redacted and Adam Idol. Um, so, it's hard to pick. TJ's dead. Hmm. Redacted. <laughs> um, I'd probably go with, um, mm-hmm. honestly, um, experience-wise, I'd go Redacted and Adam Idol. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to agree again. I think I'm going with the experience rather than, you know, the youth and upcoming. Yeah, um, but it's going to be a fun match. Every match on this card, like there's just fun elements to each one. Even if for people that you've not seen, these wrestlers have heard them, even like the graphics just sell them, I'll be honest. Um, and then if you look um, through the history of seeing them, you're just going to be banging matches. But we are going to go on to a match which um, you're personally involved in. Um, so we've got... Team pun intended, um, the returning team pun intended that we're all looking forward to, um, versus Team Hughes. So breaking out the teams, pun intended, obviously is Ryan Parrott and um, Harry Cruz. But then we've got um, Ellis Barker um, and two people you are familiar with, um, JC. And I believe the first time um, he's going to be in a match that isn't a rumble um, for a while. Um, the returning Sean Devine, and I say returning as in um, Sean has just come back to wrestling and has fell in love with it again. Um, and it's going to be yourself, um, Tyler Davis, Brian Anderson, Will Stevens, which we're both aware of, and um, Hammerhead Smith, um, the team of beautiful beards. Um, it's like the they've put together the best man. <laughs> Just went, he's got a beard. That'll go on the team. Um, so I looked across for a few of these. I'll be honest. Um, some of them I don't know much about, but that's the key of wrestling. Go to see them live, and then I'll get to know what they're about. So Hammerhead Smith and Brian Anderson, I don't know much about except they're big guys. Um, which is all you need, really. I'm gonna be honest. Um, when you want them as your tag team partner. Oh, the way I see it, my opposing team captains, Harry Cruz and Ryan Parrott, they are both big individuals, yeah. you know. Harry, he's he's jacked. Yeah, and Ryan, he's he's a giant. Yeah. He, he's massive. Let, let's just be honest here. So what better way to combat that by bringing in two of the henchiest guys I could possibly find, bringing them on the team, and immediately kind of even in the playing field? Yeah. And to be honest, it's... Yeah, I was going to say two or three, but like you said, everybody in this team, you know, we've got the testosterone, they've got the beard, and, you know, we're hard-hitting. Yeah. You know, that's one of, it may not necessarily be pretty, but we are hard-hitting, and that is exactly why Brian Anderson is, like, in the team now, and Hammerhead Smith, like, these are hard-hitting individuals. Well, it's called Hammerhead. So. <laughs> well, you know, Hammerhead, unless you've got a reputation for hitting hard. Or for being a badass in general, and there, Will Stevens, we've all seen what he's capable of. Yeah, badass individual. Yeah. Everybody on the team is badass. Yeah, so to give more of um, the people I know of, um, Tyler Davis is a regular for TTW, um, Top Turnbull Wrestling. Um, Will Stevens is a regular just in the Midlands, um, applying his train mainly in Kamikaze, and he is the DCW champion, I believe. Um, and Samuel Hughes, um, one of the stars of Kamikaze Pro Live, one of the stars of Bridge Pro Wrestling, um, and the master of the kick to the dick. Um, 
But there is something we need to mention. Um, you are coming off an injury. By injury? There we go then. Um, so he's all healed. So um, I heard Ryan Parrott is very happy that you're injured. So that's not going to be good for him. And then... <laughs> Oh, is it? Let's be honest here. Like, I, 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 I personally wouldn't wish injury upon anybody, but you know, that's just me. Yeah, it's just, just he's, he's outrageous, Ron. Um, but we will go towards their team now. Um, so Ellis Barker is a rising talent. Um, he's been around for a while in different brands. Um, JC is a kamikaze standout in the 2.0 side. Um, literally, he was the gentleman that picked up the win against Luke that we've mentioned. Um, Sean Devine is on the comeback trail. Um, this is going to be his first um, non-rumble match in four years that I know of, um, unless he's had um, singles matches somewhere else. Um, Harry Cruz, I believe this is his first match back in four years um, as well. So... Um, there's a lot of people that's going to have a lot of ring rust here. And then Ryan is more familiar for people that watch this channel of Kamikaze Pro Live. Um, he um, recently lost um, in a tag team match, weirdly enough, with an opponent, Will Stevens. So I think Will Stevens is going to um, not take well to that in this match. I think it's it's a very interesting dynamic. Like you said, you know, team pun intended is consisting of a lot of rising talent a lot of talent who are like you said either rising or making their return after a long period mm -hmm. of time and that's interesting because team hughes is full of people with experience people who have been around on, on the scene for a fair bit of time tyler hammerhead smith brian will stevens and yours truly like we are consistent and we have been in the scene for a long enough period of time to be comfortable with what we're doing yeah and I think in, I'm not being biased here because we know no one's ever biased on this show. Yeah, no. I think we have the big advantage in terms of that because we don't have ring rust, whereas Harry Cruz, Sean Devine will both have ring rust, and that makes up you know are almost half of their team. But so I think this could potentially be. It's going to be a tough one for them. You know, Sean, don't get me wrong. It's I'm glad to see you back, but you know. You've not picked an easy start for yourself. You know, putting yourself in a team that's going to struggle against people with experience. So I think it's going to be an interesting one, though, because at the same time, it goes back to the previous point of them wanting to prove something. You know, they're going to, it's a fresh start for them. They're coming back into the scene, you know, making a debut for a brand new company. You know, anything can happen. But I have no intentions of taking this easy and I have no intentions of letting it go lightly. And I am going to be on my toes at all times. And I know for a fact the rest of my team will be as well. So I know for a fact, well, I, once again, that this will be quite a spectacle. We will be going to war because there's nothing I'd love to do more than to shut Ryan Parrott up for good. Yeah. And um, it's nice to get one over and Ryan Parrott on his own show, really. Um, people are aware of that. So um, it's not breaking any walls. Um I would have to go, and it's not just because you're on the channel. It's um, I'd have to go with your team just because of one, the size of your team, um, but also two, Sean Devine's coming back. Um, this is first proper test because being in a rumble, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like you can kind of, it, I'm not going to say hide away, but like you're you're not focus points. Um, and Harry, this is one of his first matches back as well. Um, there's a lot less experience on that team. Um, and there's a lot of ring rust on that team. Um, but anything can happen in a 5-and-5. Five five, um, anything sporadic. But I'm going to go with your team winning. And I believe it is an elimination match, isn't it, as well? Yeah, it yeah. is. So, yeah. So I must about JC. Because like, he, he's just come off a victory against Luke Douglas. And that is a big win. Mm -hmm. Big um, win. So he's got momentum on his side right now. Yeah. and. Um, that he needs to take it into this match. Um, everyone needs to take, try and take as much momentum in this match. This is where you... On the first show, the first show you prove yourself because you, the section show you booked on, you're either going to be the winner of a match or a loser of a match. And then that's when streaks happen. Um, but yeah, I'd have to go with your team, uh, I'll be honest. Um, if I had to pick a scoreline, I'm going to go with... I'll give them 4-1, I'm going to go with. Um, well, 4-0, 4-0 technically, if you're going to go with the winning of the match. Um, so I feel like... 
I, don't, I can't see you going for a clean sweep. It'll be very nice for you, but um, I can see 4 0, which would be terrible for them. <laughs> a win's a win. Doesn't matter how you get it, what the scoreline is, as long as you get the result. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. And we will end this with a main event and a half um, for the West Midlands. Um, we've got Brandon Jordan versus Chantal Jordan. Um, so it's the battle of the brother and sister. Um, first time singles match that I'm aware of that's outside of training and like dojo shows etc like that um, they've tagged on several occasions at Kamikaze and so forth and they've only really faced off in Battle Royales this is a huge match um, and I think it's a massive match for Brandon because obviously when you think of the name Jordan you think of Chantel before you think of Brandon uh, so this is huge for Brandon because if he can pick up Chantal Jordan, his first match, his, si his sister, um, he will instantly step out of a shadow. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of mind games in this match. You know, there's a lot of riding on for both of these, you know, individuals. Like you just said, Brandon, he's going to want to establish himself as a Jordan. You know, most people refer to the Jordans as Chantel and Brandon. Brandon wants to make it Brandon and Chantel. Yeah. He doesn't want it's just Chantel's little brother. He wants to be him, his own person, which I have, you know, I, I respect that. I do not blame him whatsoever. But at the same time, going into this, while Chantel is extremely talented, as we all are aware of, you know, is Chantel really going to want to kick her little brother? Is she really going to want to pummel him to the ground? You know what I mean? I know there's mm. like classic rivalry, yeah. but is, she, is there going to be an element of her that's holding back? Because oh. it's family. Then it's not like they're on bad terms that we're aware of. Like, yeah. This is just a showcase for them both, and I think this is going to be it's going to be a lot easier said than done to Chantel because Chantel is, you know, she's a lovely person. He doesn't want to hurt anybody for no, especially a brother for like no good reason. Yeah, I think this is a true chance to Chantel because anyone else, Chantel is not fussed about kicking them. Look at what happened to Will Stevens; kicked him to death in the match. Will then try to show respect after match. Kicked him in the face. Um, but I don't... I like, This is the one time where we're going to see if Chantel could do that to her own brother. Um, both people... like the not, non, Neither one have really showed a bad tendency. Um, we discussed this with your match with Hassan. Um, neither person at the time had showed a bad tendency. Is this where one of them may have to turn to the dark side to pick up a win? Will Brandon, that's what I'd probably look with Brandon, because on paper, Chantel should win this match, in all honesty. from She's a veteran now. She's only 20, but she's a veteran. Um, she's been everywhere. She's fought in different countries. She's picked up multiple championships. Um, Brandon um, has only really come into his own this year on Kamikaze at the time. Um, so will he have to resort to... Will he... Then again, can he do resort to evil tactics against his sister? It's it's a hard one to not go with Chantel. Yeah, I think I think it's why you got to consider the fact that Chantel is wrestling weekend in weekend mm -hmm. out. You know, on it's very rare you will see Chantel with a weekend to herself. <laughs> like she's so in demand and she's all over the place. She's all over the country. She's in other countries. And as well, you've got to consider the fact that Brandon hasn't, he's had some time away now. You know, it's hard for him to build up that momentum when he's not able to perform as, on a regular basis in comparison to himself. So Shan, that's going to be another massive advantage that Brandon has got to overcome. As Chantel, it's again, like you said, it's so hard to imagine her wanting to inflict harm upon her brother. I think it's going to be easier for Brandon to try and inflict harm upon his sibling because, again, he's got more to prove here. This is kind of a do-or-die situation for Brandon, and I think that could be a very dangerous opponent for Chantel because while Chantel obviously knows her brother, it's very unlikely that she knows her brother in this mindset. So it's a good chance that Brandon might take everybody, including Chantel, by surprise. But that being said... I still believe that Chantal is just going to have that edge over him and think that she is going to be able to get the job done. Yeah, the way I look at it, Brandon needs to make this his company. Brandon needs to start off real well. Chantal wrestles in week in, week out. 
she's got to have some sort of injury somewhere. And who's she going to tell? Brandon Jordan. He needs to, if there's some kind of weak spot on Chantel, you need to work on that and get the win. Forget that she's your sister. You know, she just beat her, Brandon. That's what you need to do. Um, I can't say by Chantel, but, you know, my my wrestling hitwitch. He could have the tactics to do it if he really wanted to. But we will find out this Sunday. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. So um, every match sounds like a banger. Um, we, we're we pretty much on the same basis for match-wise um, for who we think we're going to win. I think the only one we had a difference was, was Luke Douglas versus um, Steve Valentino versus Joey Scott, which I think you went Valentino. Um, I went yeah. Douglas, which was never going to happen. I also believe Hassan's going to beat Levi. Where um, you're, uh, you think yeah. Hassan? We'll find out. Um, we'll find out if Hassan learnt from you and kicks him in the dick. Um, but yeah, so I've got a bit more information on the screen. I think it's called the Amblecote. Cot. Is that the name of it? Amblecote. Amblecote. Amble. I, I say Amblecote. I'm not an Amble expert. Coat. We'll probably go with that. British Legion. Um. We're in Stourbridge, and it's DY8 4DQ. Ah, there you That's a bit more information for you. Tickets are, are on sale, but they are flying out. Um, flying is the word the people I've spoken to. Um, are saying, they've, like, everyone included, like, they obviously you want the first show to do well, but they didn't expect this well. Um, so pick them up, because you may miss out. Um... And it's you snooze, you lose when you have a main event like Chantal Jordan versus Brandon Jordan. And you snooze, you lose when you have a card like this. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add on to this? Like you said, tickets in high demand, so make sure you pick them up. If you're planning on going, just pick them up now. Don't delay. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. You're going to look like an idiot. You're going to look like an idiot when you could have just spent eight quid on this show, by the way. Eight quid? Like, that's a bargain. Yeah, that's, that's not... a bargain doing with your life if you're not going to come down to watch this show what are you doing yeah like um eight quid is if you look at eight quid like you can either spend eight quid on this ticket or you can go down the mill and spend eight quid on one point and be really depressed with your life so um that's the way i look at it (laughs) yeah um but as usual um for the guest uh, their stuff is down below it is your instagram but twitter will be in the um, description as usual um like and subscribe we will be reviewing this show i don't know if um we'll have yourself on for review more than likely will because i feel i like it. it's nice to have the same person on um but it depends on how it goes for you because you might decide that you don't want to review it <laughs> um hopefully that's not yeah. the case there we go um but yeah that's it from me and from yourself, Sam. Thank you. Adios. Oh, yeah.